Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we have an exciting topic to discuss, subunit vaccines. With the recent advancements in biotech industry, subunit vaccines have gained significant attention for their potential in preventing infectious diseases. So, let's dive right in and explore the fascinating world of subunit vaccines. What are subunit vaccines? Subunit vaccines are a type of next-generation vaccine that focus on using specific parts of the pathogen instead of the whole organism. A subunit vaccine utilizes specific components or subunits of a pathogen to stimulate an immune response in the body. Unlike traditional vaccines that may contain weakened or inactivated forms of the entire pathogen, subunit vaccines focus on using key proteins, peptides, or carbohydrates of microorganisms that are responsible for triggering the immune system's response. By targeting the key components responsible for the immune response, subunit vaccines offer a safer and more targeted approach to vaccination. What are different methods to create subunit vaccines? There are several methods to create subunit vaccines, each with its own advantages and considerations. Here are some commonly used methods. Recombinant DNA technology. This method involves genetically engineering a host organism, such as bacteria or yeast, to produce the desired subunit of the pathogen. The host organism is modified to express the protein or peptide subunit, which can then be harvested and purified for use in the vaccine. Protein purification. In this method, the subunit proteins or peptides are isolated and purified directly from the pathogen or produced using recombinant DNA technology. This process typically involves breaking down the pathogen, separating the desired subunits, and purifying them to remove any unwanted components. Synthetic peptide synthesis. Synthetic peptides can be chemically synthesized in the laboratory to mimic specific subunits of a pathogen. These synthetic peptides can then be formulated into a vaccine. Virus-like particle VLP, technology. VLPs are self-assembling structures that mimic the outer shell of a virus but lack the genetic material to cause infection. Subunit vaccines can be created by expressing the desired subunit within a host organism, which then assembles into VLPs. These VLPs effectively stimulate the immune system without the risk of causing disease. Conjugation. Some subunit vaccines involve linking the subunit of interest to a carrier molecule, such as a protein or polysaccharide, to enhance its immunogenicity. This approach is commonly used in bacterial vaccines, such as the Haemophilus influenzae type B, Hib, vaccine. Nanoparticle-based delivery systems, Nanoparticles, such as liposomes or virus mimicking nanoparticles, can be used to deliver subunit antigens to the immune system. These nanoparticles enhance the stability and uptake of the subunit antigens, potentially improving the immune response. It's important to note that the choice of method depends on various factors, including the nature of the pathogen, the desired subunit, safety considerations, and scalability of production. What is the purpose of subunit vaccines? The purpose of subunit vaccines is to stimulate an immune response in the body against a specific pathogen or infectious agent. By using specific components or subunits of the pathogen, subunit vaccines can trigger the immune system's recognition and memory of the pathogen without causing the actual disease. The main purposes of subunit vaccines are Disease prevention Subunit vaccines are designed to prevent infectious diseases by inducing an immune response that can protect individuals from future exposure to the pathogen. They aim to generate specific immune memory cells, such as B cells and T cells, which can recognize and neutralize the pathogen upon subsequent encounters. Safety. Subunit vaccines offer a safer alternative to traditional vaccines that use weakened or inactivated forms of the whole pathogen. By focusing on specific subunits, the risk of adverse reactions or disease caused by the vaccine is significantly reduced. This makes subunit vaccines particularly suitable for individuals with compromised immune systems or those who may be more susceptible to adverse vaccine reactions. Targeted immune response. Subunit vaccines allow for a targeted immune response against specific components of the pathogen. By selecting the most immunogenic and relevant subunits, scientists can enhance the immune response and tailor the vaccine to address different strains or mutations of the pathogen. Customization and adaptability. Subunit vaccines can be easily customized and modified to address the evolving nature of pathogens. As new strains or variants emerge, researchers can select different subunits to target these changes, ensuring the vaccine remains effective against the updated versions of the pathogen. Manufacturing and production. Subunit vaccines often have simpler and more standardized manufacturing processes compared to traditional vaccines. 
This scalability and ease of production allow for mass production and distribution, making subunit vaccines more accessible to larger populations. By fulfilling these purposes, subunit vaccines contribute to public health by preventing the spread of infectious diseases, reducing the severity of illness, and protecting individuals and communities from potential outbreaks. What are the examples of subunit vaccines? There are several examples of subunit vaccines that have been developed and widely used. Some notable examples include Hepatitis B vaccine. The Hepatitis B vaccine is a well-known subunit vaccine. It contains a subunit of the hepatitis B virus called the hepatitis B surface antigen, HBSAG. By administering this subunit, the vaccine stimulates the immune system to produce antibodies against the HBSAG, providing protection against hepatitis B infection. Human papillomavirus, HPV, vaccine. The HPV vaccine is a subunit vaccine that targets specific proteins from the human papillomavirus. The vaccine contains one or more of the viral proteins, such as the major capsid protein L1. HPV vaccines protect against certain strains of HPV that are responsible for causing cervical cancer, as well as other types of cancers and genital warts. Acellular pertussis vaccine. The acellular pertussis vaccine is a component of the combination vaccine for pertussis, whooping cough. It consists of specific proteins produced by the Bordetella pertussis bacterium, the causative agent of pertussis. The subunit vaccine helps prevent pertussis infection by eliciting an immune response against these key proteins. Meningococcal conjugate vaccines. Meningococcal conjugate vaccines are subunit vaccines that target Neisseria meningitidis, a bacterium responsible for meningococcal disease. These vaccines use specific polysaccharides from the bacterium, which are conjugated, attached, to carrier proteins to enhance the immune response. They protect against several serogroups of Neisseria meningitidis. COVID-19 vaccines. Several COVID-19 vaccines are based on the subunit vaccine approach. For example, the Pfizer-BioNTech and Moderna vaccines use messenger RNA mRNA, technology to deliver the genetic instructions for the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. The spike protein is a subunit of the virus that plays a crucial role in infection. By targeting this subunit, these vaccines elicit an immune response and provide protection against COVID-19. Conclusion. As we conclude our discussion on subunit vaccines, it's important to acknowledge the immense contribution of scientists and researchers in developing these innovative vaccines. Their dedication and hard work continue to shape the future of disease prevention. That's all for today's video on subunit vaccines. We hope you found this information valuable and gained a better understanding of this exciting field. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more informative content. Thank you for watching, and remember, stay informed, stay healthy.